so happy you could be here, so happy you could swim here. How are you? How are you? Well, we're back, we're back. Good morning, Sadie. How are you? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Miami. Good morning, America, North, Central, and South. We got people coming today from the United States of America, none other than from uh, the city of brotherly love, Mr. Mark Routerkos, and he is a trooper. He is a warrior. Guys and girls, I will let you tell him all he does, but he's involved with all kinds of boards of directors on safety. He's a big guy on the squim. You guys never heard of squim, but you're gonna hear about it. Well, wait a minute, you heard about it from Kevin once upon a time. Uh -huh. He's a swimming coach, you know, swimming coach is always on time. So Nati, Nati Duca, I love that, I love that new name, Nati Duca. I don't know where Oski Hosky is, he's always on time. Patty, good morning, Patty's here, gonna listen to Mark and then she coming on. The American from Venezuela Patty is coming on soon. We'll look up here and welcome him to our cafecito because every day somebody else comes. And like I say it all the time, I love it. With their little golden nuggets, they sweeten our coffee. <laughs> Mr. Router Cows is here. Da -da 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 -da. It's one of these, beam me up, Scotty. And I'll beam you up. And here you are, Mark. Thank you. Cards. I tell you, you know, the the two years time that I've known you, I've only heard and seen amazing things about you. And Thank you. And you, you too. Board of directors that has to do good stuff, and everybody in swimming sort of knows you. And I don't know why I had it took me so long to meet you, but I'm so lucky that I got to meet you when we were together at the national, I'm going to say at the last national drowning prevention Alliance live meeting. And we had a good time in New Orleans. Yes, we did. You took me around a bunch of places, nice places, coffee shops, not the other kind of places. Well, you told me stories about your trips with the Miami team. <laughs> yeah, we heard the stories on my trip with University of Miami, the days I swam. It's it's a while ago. Those trips to New Orleans to compete against Tulane are memorable in the minds of a few other University of Miami hurricanes. But today, you know, Cafecito was built on the idea that people are staying home more than ever, that pools are not being open. In Miami, Florida, of course, my community it seems most homes have pools and every single condominium has a pool. And so we give little tips of advice, I wanna to say to the parents, you know, I tell them all the time, just spend the time playing in the pool with your kids. Don't tell them to kick, kick, kick. Don't tell them to blow their bubbles. Hold the wall, hold me, do whatever it takes to stay safe. And they discover how to swim. Uh, but I know that you've been involved in learning to swim, and I want you to tell us a little bit of that so these parents listening to you will get some of the important stuff. And I know you're very involved with squim, and it's a very, in quotations, unknown game, but it's a really good variation of water polo, volleyball, uh, ice hockey, you know, it combines a lot of really fun stuff, and you play it with fins. So even the folks that don't swim so good start swimming pretty quick. And so let's talk about safety first, Mark, please. And, and again, welcome to Cafecito with Coach Robert. I know that your time is precious, and when people share it with us, we just feel so honored and so thankful. Talk to me, Mr. Robert Cruz. Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I agree that we need to be taking our youngsters and um, getting them all the way to becoming a lifeguard. And, you know, even these lifeguards need to be able to 
um, teach their um, their family members, to teach their their neighbors, to be you know good teachers in the pool, and um, and then one day teach their own children how to swim. So yeah, that um, knowing how to swim and the work that you do is just um, really important for our society. And, you know, and then you just went through like 17 to 22 years of the life of a child in one and a half minutes. And I understood you because I do this all my life too. But let, let's recap because what you just threw at us was awesome, Mark. You're looking at a child, kind of starts growing up, learns to swim. Maybe he goes to the swim school. Maybe he learns at home with parents, like you said. And then he grows more and he goes a little bit on the swim team. And whether he likes it or not, he has the wonderful opportunity to become a lifeguard if he swims well enough to cover the 300 or 400 yard swim test. And he could stay afloat for the minute on the treading water with hands off or no hands. And then he could be a lifeguard and learn a lot about safety. And soon enough, if I heard you right, he could be a water safety instructor, but even if not, soon enough he's gonna have kids, and now he can teach his own kids. Woo! You guys yeah. up in Philadelphia, city of brotherly love, really speak fast. Well, I'm from Pittsburgh, and uh, oh. but that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's important to put that little seed in the back of the children's minds that you know you're gonna grow up one day and need a job and want a job, and this is like the best job ever. You know, so let's get our kids to aspire to becoming the lifeguard. You know, so of course you're, we're going to learn to swim. And of course you're going to care for your neighbor and friends. And you're going to help, you know, at the beach or wherever. But um, so, hey, what are you going to be when you grow up? Your kids love to pretend that way. You know, let's get them thinking about being a lifeguard. And, and of course, lifeguarding might not be the, you know, the, the ultimate profession, but it's such a great entry level job and and it opens up so many other avenues from teaching to being a firefighter to being a doctor and a nurse and a caregiver and hospitality you know so i think that um that idea that hey, I, one day maybe you'll be a lifeguard little little toddler then then i think um it just it just it gives a vision and um and it's and it represents a lot of um good things that we want in our our youth you know something i want to confide you just kind of crystallized in my mind and made me travel 40 some odd years ago my first child is 41 my second child is 38 and i did what you said i almost didn't care if they swam in the nationals or what have you they did some of that stuff and they went to all the swimming thing you know represented the country of colombia because their mom is colombian by birth so they had the dual nationality but i wanted them to be lifeguards entry level into society what you just said is beautiful and i never thought i planted the seeds of my kids heads and they were good lifeguards and then they learned the mannerisms to talk to the public to ask them nicely not to go in the deep or to please walk on the pool or don't eat and you learn to do all these things but most important on all the lifeguarding programs the team aspect the helping others as you see fit the keeping them the preventing incidents all these things that are so important and neither one of my kids is a lifeguard today. No. Their certification probably expired 15 years ago, and the other guy maybe 12 years ago. But you know what? Give me some more of that good stuff, because as you grow as a lifeguard, blood all of a sudden doesn't scare you that much. And if you had a medical profession in your mind, hey, please go do it. Mark, it's awesome. I want to send a big regards to our friend Kevin, out in Washington, Seattle. I don't know if he got up early enough to watch it today because it's six o'clock for him in the morning. So give me a little bit more of this stuff with the lifeguarding and the being careful around the pool. You're the best. Well, thanks. The, um, I often deal with some summer school camper kids 
And um, yeah, in the beginning of the summer, a lot of them can't swim. You know, they're here in the city and, um, but we go to the pool every day in the afternoons and, um, you know, we put fins on them and get them kicking. If you could put your face in the water and kick across the pool, um, that extra propulsion really helps. And um, I think that um, using the fins um, helps a couple ways. One, it gets them level in the water. And then when we start playing the games, we put the fins on, it's harder to walk. So I want them to get swimming and getting flat in the water and, and propulsing, pro pro propelling themselves. And then, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to teach them water safety. I lost you for a second, Mark. I'm so sorry. I had a technical difficulty. There was a call bringing in, and okay. I lost what you said about going in the afternoons to swim. Yeah, so um, we, for years, have worked with Pittsburgh Public Schools and with the summer school students, and then we'll um, get the kids in the afternoon. They've had academics in the morning, and then we get to take them to the pool. But they want us to also have a connected learning part so that the kids are um, swimming, of course, but it um, also should have some educational value, some enrichment value. So over the years, I've created some resources that are online that I could be very happy to share with you, all of your listeners or anybody you know, the world over. There's some, please, please. There's some water <laughs> safety tests, like quizzes. Now, depending on the age of your kid, you know, there's take 20 or 25 questions on a quiz. You can guess them out, um, go through, you know, one on one. And a lot of the kids in our city, they don't have those, that experience at the beach. They don't know what a rip current is. You know, they don't know what, that there are some things in the water that can really sting you or whatever. So so we use the, the quizzes as a way to really expose them to um, to other question and answer it's a little more school like and the the teachers like that so that's one one resource is a, a set of quizzes and we can um have Where the parents are, do that are the quizzes on your facebook or do you have them online somewhere yeah they're online it, um if you go to um squim.us you'll be able to see there's um four le levels of quizzes s k w i m Dot us. It's like swim, but with the a K. letters a K. Yes. Swim with a K for king. Swim with a K for. Uh, well, it's it's like skim. You're like this 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 skims across the water, so it squims across the water. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's um. So those um, quiz like um, testing things, and I think you can take it over and over again until you get it perfect. And then the, the, the students or the, your child will get to, to know some of these questions. And, and even for an adult too, hey, let's, let's get through these and let's give you a feedback. There's no cost, there's no failing, there's no pressure, but it's a way to um, seize questions that will then um, maybe they'll find, you know, running against these things and make good decisions in the water, maybe on a vacation or visiting somebody else's pool or visiting a lake or a at a party or something. Mm -hmm. So so that's one um, little resource that we did online. This year, we had um, cyber swim camp, right? We couldn't meet with the kids. So uh, I've asked all my friends, including you, to, to tell me a story. You know, people love to learn with a story. And, and it's sort I, of- I said the story. I know, okay. it's there. It's, <laughs> so, so I've got probably more than 50 stories now about water. And, and some of these stories are from the West Coast, some are from the East Coast, some are the first time the person went fishing, all varieties of people, all varieties of stories, and um, people like to learn with a story. And then you can watch a five minute story with your kid, and then you can talk about what were some of those words that were expressed, or what were some of those conditions, or wouldn't it be fun to go there someday and, and have a, a kayaking story or, you know, do you think grandpa could, could fit into this story too? You know, so so I've got a bunch <laughs> of stories online that people are, are willing to, um, to view and, you know, apply them any way you'd like. 
Um, and that's at a different website, uh, um, s6.cloh.org. And we'll follow up with this. Um, Can this, you repeat that? Dot yeah. Org, blow yeah. S6, the, the letter S and the number six, and then there's a dot. And then there's four letters, C-L-O-H, creating literate Olympians here, oh. dot org. S6 org. dot C-L-O-H dot O-R-G. Yes. And you you'll know, find a like nice said, long list of stories. When you say that folks will find the stories and then they can make questionnaires, I don't know that a lot of people are going to like the story that your granddaughter was standing in the steps where you're daughter-in-law left her and the little girl boom but in the water her by herself everybody awake and i'm the first one to say when you're with a little guy you're at the eye of the hand and that means you know people say you got to be at arm's length reach of a child in the pool when they don't know how to swim well let me tell you in the house of this humble person the arm's reach is not this arm, but it's the size of the arm of the child. You yeah. could not be as far as your arm. You need to be where the arm of the little person can hold on whenever they want to. And then they stay confident. Otherwise, they're just trying to catch you, catch you, and you're getting away from them, and it makes it scary. So I don't know if people want to see that story, but C6, no, S6 dot c l o h dot o r g o r g okay well folks good stories because people from across the country have had amazing experiences and you only learn from other people you know it's like the national drowning prevention alliance god bless those folks because you know they've had a tragedy and they turn it around and make a good memory of their child that was lost, however it went, and they're trying to educate folks in their communities. Tell us a little bit then. Oh, wait, show me your little yellow disc. I want to tell you I have a few of those that uh, Kevin so gracefully sent to us once upon a time, and the kids in the pool, even if we don't set up the goals, yeah. The goal is it's always a little laborious, but shooting the squim and watching it skim on the water, it is the most fun. Folks, if you never heard of squim, go look it up. Like Mark says, it's a swim with a K or it's a skim with a W and squim, S-K-W-I-M. You will have so much fun. Just buy a dozen of them and use them to throw them across the pool. You'll keep safe distance between eight, 12 kids, you know, however you could spread yeah. them out at the safe distance. And tossing a little Frisbee is awesome. Right, right. Now, our, our kids, they often call it a water Frisbee. And, and, but you don't need a dozen, just get one, you know, get two. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's not a dog toy because it's soft. You know, right. um, it's but, not a dog toy. Keep but in the water, it's fine. You, know, you can water. take, yeah, you can take it in a kisser in the pool, and it's not going to leave a mark, and it's going to be fun. But um, it, it slides really smooth, and even a little one. You know, guys, three years old, they can grip yeah. this thing, and and then wow, that that thing goes flying. You know, almost easier than a ball. But then from that, we teach teamwork and we, you know, passing and offense and defense and, and um, hustling on the, on the, in the pool. So, yeah, the, um, the games that we can play here and, and any type of backyard pool or a, um, a local pool, two on two, three on three, it's sort of um, very flexible. And I agree that, the, you know, putting in the regulation goals is, um, is wonderful for an aquatic center, but you can play in all sorts of ways. We play like a frisbee golf. You know, we play, um, you know, a little dodgeball or a little soccer. You know, all different types of um, of teamwork. Just passing back and forth is um, is really fun. And um, and the kids just like that spinning motion. And um, and and if it gets a little bit out of bounds or something, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody. It's not like a you tennis ball or you know a basketball. They're just too heavy. Every home that has a pool in the world deserves a squim disc. 
It is that much fun. Guys, if you never bought a squim disc, go look it up and get it. It is amazing. So let's let's change gears a little bit. And while we're still, you know, we're always on the topic of safety. When it comes to the pool, always on the topic of safety. Don't pedal your bicycle around the pool. The back tire, the little safety wheel is going to get caught in the corner and you're going to fall. Don't ride your skateboard unless you're as good as Sienna skating and swimming. <laughs> Don't ride your skateboard around the pool and so on and so forth. So let's get to the NDPA, Mark, that you've done amazing job for them. And tell us how you relate for them and perhaps you can motivate some of these National Drone and Prevention Alliance folks to come on out to Cafecito to help me do my job and their job. If you could call this a job, help the children to choose to stay away from the water. All right, so swimming lesson is a prevention. So the fence with the gate opening to the outside is a prevention. So the little alarms are another prevention, all right? And kids are still drowning. 52 kids drowned this year already in Florida. It's, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Help us out. What are you doing these days with NDPA to help them prevent <laughs> accidental drownings in their home? Well, there will be a convention again. We'll hopefully be able to gather in San Diego after the first of the year. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to share our lessons with our cyber swim camp and um, be able to um, use that. And, and we're also creating a lot of resources. I got, a, um, I got my International Swim Coaches Association hat on, too. So we're trying to get the the scientists in the sports performance people even to think about um, the grassroots things, about the basics, about, you know, our important mission of recreation and safety and, and, um, and pools and aquatics. So I think this discussion of, um, you know, can even go into the, the competitive realm to, hey, to let's get, you know, everybody, every citizen really aware of the water. And, and um, that's, you know, partly online, you know, once it's in your head, then it can be in your body. You know, we have to educate, you know, the mind leads, the body follows. And so we let's let's get some fun ways to to expose the children and the parents and the adults. And then from there, we can all be um, wiser, you know, someday later when we're going to need to make some good decisions for ourselves and for our the people around us. So, so yeah, the, the, in other words, important. it's about everybody deciding not to say, get away from the water, don't swim, you drown, change the mindset into be careful with the water, and you're going to learn to do it if you go there enough times. Is this yeah. kind of what you're trying to tell us? And you're right. If people go 50 hours to a pool, they'll be swimming. They don't need to do freestyle butterfly breaststroke. They need to move comfortably. They need to be able to take a breath. If they got their little fins kicking their feet, they stay up on a surface easy. To that effect, you mentioned early in our talk today, and it's really important. Black people can swim. Oh. You're in Pittsburgh. You said you go into the inner city and you have camps. Tell me about these black little kids, how good they become when they start swimming. Oh, yeah. I'm dying to teach every single black kid in the United States of America. Everybody's got those signs, black lives count and what have you. You know what? I never had any problem with any black people. In fact, I have some really good friends of the color of black. And the bottom line, you cut me here. Well, if you cut me here, it bleeds orange. And you cut me here, it bleeds green. But the rest of it bleeds red like everybody else. <laughs> We're yeah. all the same. Yeah, so often it's um, just a, a matter of, um, you know, political will. You know, in the city we have, you know, public pools. And um, I like to 
engage the kids. And when we have our summer camp, it's like I have the kids for about three hours. So, you know, that's a long time. Kids can get a tuckered in, you know, 15 minutes doing laps or something. So, so we have to make it fun. And, and, and when it's fun at the pool and the pool becomes the playground, then the next very important lesson that we teach is playing well with others. So we get the swim disc out and um, we break up into teams. And now we're talking about sportsmanship and we're, we're, we're passing and we're doing teamwork things. And, and now it's fun. And there's the instant drama and excitement with trying to win. But before you know it, you know, one hour has gone by, you know, two hours have gone by and you're playing and you're in the water and you're building your fitness and you're building your strength and you're, you're getting your confidence stronger and you're now you're swimming for the disc and you're challenging. You know, so, so I think that whole um, context of gameplay um, can help sustain, you know, the energy of the kids and, um, and make it more fun so that then they come back the next day. Ah, oh, we're and then hopefully we can get better, and then we can go over to the neighbor, the other pool at the other cross town, and play them and, and make new friends. So, so I I think that whole sense of the pool needs to have some extra spices in there, so that we're and then that what Kevin loves to do, and you know, let's get the lifeguard or you know that's off duty lifeguard in the pool playing with the kids too. You know, sure, there's life right on the deck, but but now we've got a, an adult or you know some role model that's it's, that's mixing it up, and and you can do that with swim because there's no contact. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you can't have a 50 year old playing basketball with a bunch of 16 year old kids, or <laughs> a, an eight year old jump into the game, you know, because of the high school kids are playing. But in the pool, we're all a little bit even. Yeah, sure, that guy's got longer arms, but these kids can be crafty, you know, and there's no <laughs> touching, you know. So uh, it's the pool sort of allows us all to play well with each other. It, the you know, water it, equalizes. We're yeah. all the same height. The water is right here. The rest of the body is down below. And you're stroking away, trying to steal the squim and pass it around. Mark, Mark, tell us. In this, in these camps you run, do you have like a half and half percentage of white kids, black kids, or Oriental or Asian children, Latin children? What is the mix up in Pittsburgh? Um, Pittsburgh's predominantly in the public schools, uh, um, African American, you know, um, demographic. You know, but but there's a lot of immigrant kids. You know, there there are a lot, there are some white families too, for sure. You know, so um, I, I share, I'll share my photos with you, but it's, um, it, it, it depends. Now you get a little bit into the suburbs, um, it's a little more white, you know, um, but it, it depends, it, you know, what neighborhoods you're in. And um, we definitely need to have, you know, the city kids getting strong. We got three big rivers that go through our town and, um, you know, we should be using those rivers, you know, for more than a photo opportunity. You know, we should be recreating. I want to put the kid in and, you know, until they can swim and, and be um, masters in the water, too. So um, that's, um, it's it's all kids. Um, often our kids are sort of assigned us because they've signed up for summer school. So um, we, we, we take whatever we can, but we'll go out to a, a country club team or a, a neighborhood pool and uh, I'll bring my bag of goodies, you know, some headbands maybe to, to designate who's on which team and some discs, we'll throw it into the gutter and yeah, we'll, we'll just mix it up and, um, and um, it's maybe have some fins. It's just, just a lot of fun. The kids like to go to the county pools or the city pools or our school pools. Yeah. Mark, let me tell you, I could spend the whole hour with you, but I'm going to fly to Venezuela in Ooh. America. I have a big conference tonight throughout South America. They've got maybe 500 people signed up the last I heard. And somebody sent me a notice a couple of days ago. Coach, look at your poster. You're going to be lecturing in my town. I'm so happy. Well, now when you lecture in the squim or in, I mean, in the, in the, what do you call it? The, the Facebook or the live stuff 
or in the Zoom or in the Meet Google. And I am so lucky and so proud. I spent a little bit of time in Brazil. On Saturday, they invited me to talk at the Gustavo Borges Methodologies. Huge program they had. They had John Urban check. They had Glenn Mills. They had Jim Spears, you know, the guy on the, the Stop Drowning Now. And then they had, you know, 120 speakers. They had my coach at the Olympics. They had uh, Nelson Vargas from Mexico. It was huge. And, and I was so honored that they even thought of choosing me. So, you know, when, when, when stuff like that happens, our whole career has been about safety, about caring. And now tonight, I got another thing. And then tomorrow is the Robert Strauss uh, Swiminar in El Inglés. And Wednesday, Robert Strauss Swiminar in Espanol. You know, it's pandemia out there, but we're busy. We're Good busy for you. Because, because we're swimmers. Because we don't know how to get to the pool and just sit around and wait. We no. get to the pool, and if coach is not there, we jump in and we start swimming the laps or playing the game. Coach, thank you so, so much for coming, Mark. And thank you for all you do for all of us on safety around the pool. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh-huh. There it goes. Itsy Bitsy Spider.